uh, kind of gone this week. So this is the last time I make a public announcement. <laughs> um, Michael will help you keep track of the time and help you get set up with the projector. And uh, yeah, if you would like an introduction, you can come to us and tell us a little bit about you. Or otherwise, we just push you on the stage <laughs> and uh, you get to talk. And uh, yeah, have fun. Uh, hi, I'm Marco. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun talking about social attention. Um, so I ride the Caltrain out here now and then, and one of the coolest things that I've seen in the last year on there that just totally blew my mind was how this guy put his bike on the rack inside the Caltrain. So what I've seen, uh, people how they tie their bike, put the bike on the frame, and then they kind of loop it around a couple of times, and this bungee cord kind of hangs out there. And then I saw something that's just so brilliant. It's just such a feat of great engineering. This guy put his bike up there and he used his bungee cord. He fed it through the frame and then clip it through the back wheel. The whole thing just looks like a nice right angle. This is the minimum amount of cord that you need to tie this thing on securely. It will not bounce. It's not going anywhere, which is brilliant. Now, then, then I thought about, okay, how many people are riding this thing and how many times has not anybody thought about different ways to tie their bike on here? Um, and that's what kind of uh, fed me back into social attention. So social attention, it's um, how different social networks uh, think and classify knowledge. Um, there's different companies and how they organize their culture, what they find important. And kind of, uh, so this has been my kind of uh, area of research and expertise for the last five years. I'm generally looking at how social networks create markets, um, how different social networks find things valuable, and then how people trade within those things. Another thing uh, that I was looking at is questions on how do you generate surprise? Um, so here, my mind was totally blown with this bike thing. I'm thinking, how do you continually generate this kind of serendipity and surprise within networks, uh, within any type of product, within a process that kind of we interact with each other? And how do you sustain this stuff? Um, six months ago, um, Alton and I went to uh, Las Vegas, where the entire culture of uh, the downtown project is how do you generate more serendipity uh, within the place and kind of that's what makes people friendlier, more accepting, more open and inclusive and generally feeds back into Zappos' corporate culture and profitability down the line. Um, and another kind of cool thing which I thought about this area was um, in terms of kind of sustaining this area of surprise, it's how do you maintain the culture of resiliency and kind of um, doing kind of risky things and how do you imagine more kind of edge cases on things. Um, so here with the bike, it was how do you continually make something that you kind of think about the mundane regularly and kind of try to improve it and what kind of great engineering feats that, that kind of makes. Um, so I guess the question which I'd like to leave you here with after seeing all this bike and stuff is how do you make the ordinary extraordinary and what kind of mundane things that you never think about could you think about to generate this? Thanks very much. Any questions? Sure, questions. Yeah. What do you do for money? What do you, what are you making? What do you do to what do you turn to money to make What are your how do how do you go about doing that? Example within your mind. Well, um, driving your car or something. What about the seats inside the car? Um, again, I was fascinated with this bike thing because uh, I just never think about that. I ignore a lot of things in my life so I can kind of focus on what is interesting at the moment. Um, so I guess talk to more kind of people that you never would kind of talk to. Um, and just you never know what you're gonna find out and what people think about for a living. To me, the, it seems like the challenge is choosing what to make extraordinary, mm -hmm. because there are so many things in my environment, many of which are very far from optimized. And I can choose between like paying attention to all these things that are like screaming out for better design, or focusing on some other primary goal. And it's often a tough decision. And I've often realized that the cognitive load that I've chosen to spend on certain things, like how I used to drive down Highway 101 and yeah. figured out all the exits I could take to avoid traffic by like 
merge out and merge back in again. Mm -hmm. That maybe I should have just stayed on the highway and thought about stuff that, that was more central. So <laughs> it, it does it does get down to like which little pieces do you choose to spend your time on? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you've thought thought about that and thought about what deserves the most attention. Question. Um, Julian, what I find is you never know. Uh, you never know when that kind of source of inspiration or um, what you totally find is what I've kind of so being here for the last year, what I've noticed is a lot of times I've just been bored out of my life for a long time with things, mm -hmm. and then the last kind of few seconds when you're kind of leaving something, or something happens, something amazing that makes whatever time you've spent as a dead weight loss make totally extraordinary. You never know with these things, you just kind of keep going. Mm -hmm. Life's awesome. <laughs> yeah. How does the bike thing propagate? Like <laughs> that right now that's one guy doing something. Yeah. And <laughs> so that needs to propagate. Mm -hmm. Um ideally in an organically low load way. Mm -hmm. So how? Mm -hmm. It's a business model. Interesting. Interesting. No, it doesn't. It does not need a business model. No, well, the sign is good. I like a sign. Game of conventions. <laughs> I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. Um, I was actually up in Alaska to go watch the Aurora, but that's a different story. And the next day I was like, well, crap, I'm in Fairbanks. What should I do? And I went to every trail, and there were all these like nice trails. The one that I ended up going on was clearly not actually a trail. It was just like walking around this like communications facility on top of the hill. And I was thinking about it, that thanks to the internet, thanks to the ease of sharing, someone was able to just share their favorite place that they made something special out of, even though it's not a real trail. And so I feel like if I were on Caltrain, if someone had just some note that's accessed somehow, like, oh, I see you're, you're trying to lay up your bike. Here's a better way of doing that. You know, to have that pop up, that could be wonderful. Mm -hmm. There were paper perfect suggestions, too. There we go. <laughs> so you're bunching your bike? <laughs> I think that we should make stickers. Like, I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but... <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You probably have, you know, another 100 people or 200 people have noticed, hey, this is a fairly good way of doing it. But at that point, everybody thinks, well, you know, what is the work that I should do? So, you know, is there sort of like a lazy web equivalent where you know, it's like, hey, if you notice something interesting, there's just like a piece of paper with a star printed on it. Mm -hmm. It's just talking with us. No, that that would take forever. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. making a sticker and putting it on, yeah. and daring them to remove it because it, oh, they look at it and say, "Oh, that's actually kind of useful." Yeah, uh, just make it look official. Yeah, yeah. 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 they wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just snap a picture of him, put it on Reddit, and then no one should do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think it's dumb or it or vote yeah. it up, and a lot of you won't too. believe how this guy loved his bike. It gets amazing at one minute thirteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Rita, any any last questions or comments or thoughts? Great. All right, cool. Thanks. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mark, you you feeling it? Uh, okay. I the last one. Okay. Uh, no, no. No, there's more. Right, there's more. So other people who signed up, uh, Riva. Oh no, wait, who's picking his sign? Yeah. Uh, Matt. Matt Bell. Matt Bell. Right. Yeah. Nikhil, I, uh, if you yeah. want to. Okay. I, I can always give some slides. Yeah. I have the video and the models. This is the perspective.